In prepping, we often prepare for major catastrophes like regional storms or earthquakes. But are you really prepared to lose your job or survive a financial crisis? In March of 2017, a claim was made that nearly one half of Americans couldn't write a check for $500. With the financial collapse and ensuing food shortages happening right now in Venezuela, it should make us in the prepper community think long and hard about our own finances. In this video, we'll discuss the seven laws you should follow to weather events like an economic collapse or an even more likely scenario of losing your job. You can show your support for this channel by clicking the like button, sharing on social media, providing feedback in the comment section, and don't forget as a subscriber to click the bell icon below to get updates. Enjoy the video. I've had a few requests in the comment sections of my videos recently about finances and budget prepping. Modern Reformer asks, have you given thought of making a video for a budget prepper? Benjamin Cortina1 asks, do you have videos about budget prepping and what's your opinion about it? Budget prepping and just plain old budgeting go hand in hand. So let's jump in and discuss what I consider to be seven financial laws that you'll want to observe as a prepper. Prepping has costs associated with it, gear and skills to acquire, requiring you to budget and to be a good steward of your finances. I've known preppers that have allowed fear to drive them to credit card debt only to regret it later when nothing happened. By having a level-headed approach and a control over your finances, you can much more intelligently navigate yourself financially in prepping. By setting yourself up for financial freedom in the future, you give yourself the ability to be in a better position financially if a catastrophe does strike. As we asked at the beginning of the video, how many preppers are prepared financially for common things like losing a job? In this video, I'll share from my own personal experience with finances and how has it impacted how I prep. I learned a lot by following the steps outlined in Dave Ramsey's book, Financial Peace. I implemented the steps he outlined and has put myself and my family on a path to financial security. Should there be an economical downturn in the economy, had a major unexpected expense, or lost my business, we would make it. So here are the seven immutable prepper financial laws that I personally live by, and I hope they're of value to you. Number one, create a budget. A budget allows you to take control of your finances and gives you a full understanding of where every dollar is going. In prepping, there's expenses in acquiring gear and other resources, and for those that have a really tight budget, making sure you can squeeze out every dollar from your paycheck is important. Without a budget, you won't be able to effectively do this. The first step is to create a budget, which is very straightforward. The goal is to create a simple, zero-based budgeting approach. So how do you do this? Well, start by determining your household's total take-home pay after taxes. Then you simply document in a spreadsheet the regular monthly expenses you have like your mortgage, utilities, grocery bills, insurance, and other items. I find it easy to look over my bank account and see all my expenses. Once you have all the numbers added up in a spreadsheet, you'll want to define where every dollar goes. As a prepper, you'll need to find a way to create a line item for prepping. How much you want to spend on a monthly basis on prepping is really up to you and what you can afford. At first, sitting down and doing a budget might be a real eye-opener when you see what you're actually spending money on each month. Without a budget, it's amazing how much money will slip through your fingers if you don't actually stick to it. By creating a budget, you will have a very clear picture of your finances. This would be a good time to make decisions about what you want to cut or reduce in pricing. Does spending $150 a month on cable really make sense if you're having to cover expenses with a credit card? As you review your budget, find ways to cut spending. The goal is to increase the amount of money you can save and what you can invest in the supplies you need to pick up. And what do you do if you don't have enough money in your budget to prep? Well, get creative. Pick up a second job or find another way to develop a revenue stream. Step number two is get a $1,000 emergency fund in place. As mentioned at the beginning of the video, a CEO named Alan Kohlberg made the remark that half of Americans cannot afford to write a $500 check in an emergency on Bloomberg TV a few months ago. Now, when I first got serious about my finances and getting them in line about 10 years ago, this is the first step I took. It was difficult at first as I wasn't used to saving money, but that first step was a huge psychological milestone on a path that has ultimately led me to a much more secure place financially. I would encourage you to do whatever it takes to get this in place. Whether this means having a garage sale or picking up side work, make this as a priority as once you have this amount in place, it gives you a small buffer to handle the unexpected things that come up in life. Also, should there be a catastrophe in your area and the grid goes down, you won't be able to run to the ATM to withdraw cash and your credit cards will be no good if the store isn't accepting card payments. Keep this money in a secure, safe place in your home. 
This isn't investment money you keep at your bank, but rather it should be available at a moment's notice. Step number three is to get out of debt. There's a proverb that says this, the wealthy rule over the poor, and anyone who borrows is a slave to the lender. This saying is so true. When you owe someone money, you are essentially their slave. Have you ever been behind on a payment and had a debt collector call you and harass you? Well, how fun is that? It can really stress you out over time. Some may argue, hey, why pay off debt if we're heading to higher inflation if the economy may collapse? Well, you need to consider the reality that should there be an economic event, you could lose your job. Should this happen, you're a much more likely candidate to lose your home and belongings. Remember when the real estate bubble burst back in 2007 and 2008 here in the United States? I remember watching the local news every night and watching stories about people being forced out of their homes as they were foreclosed on and being forced into tents and living in the back of their cars. Times were tough then and having debt hanging over your head will compound the problem. While you have a job and have the money, get rid of your debt so that should you lose your job later, you don't end up on the streets. Also, if you hold any debt that is an adjustable rate debt, be especially attentive to this and dump it as soon as possible as the banks will likely jack the rates higher if the economy crashes. When my wife and I got serious about paying off our debt years ago, we used a little trick that worked extremely well for us. It's called the debt snowball. It's an approach that is outlined in the book, uh, Financial Peace, which I mentioned earlier. It works like this. You line up your debts, smallest to greatest, and then start on the smallest debt first. Now, I know that some may argue the best approach is to go after the debt with the highest interest rate, but there's a motivation in paying off debt and then moving on to the next debt. So first pay off the smallest debt. Once that's paid off, take that money from your budget you had used to pay that small debt off and then roll that into your next debt. Once that next debt is paid off, then roll that combined money in your budget into the next debt and so on. The advantage of using this approach is that when you start knocking out the easier debts, you'll see results and stay motivated to go on to the larger debts. I call this approach a trick as there's a psychological component to keeping you motivated to attack the other debts. And by the way, don't try to leverage debt to gain gear or supplies. I've known preppers that felt there was some pending emergency that was about to happen and they ended up you know, buying a lot of gear on credit card and when nothing ended up happening, the debt that they were left with was very difficult to deal with. Number four, ditch credit and debit cards for cash. Getting off relying upon credit cards and debit cards was a huge first step for me years ago to not only get out of debt, but to learn to control my spending. One of the stories told in the book Financial Peace is about how McDonald's found that people spent 47% more when using credit instead of cash. When you pay cash, there's a real connection that you can actually feel when you spend money, not so much when using credit or debit cards. And they found that by installing these machines, their sales went way up. Again, in the context of prepping, we're trying to lessen our financial expenditures, and by getting off using plastic, we better our chances of having money left at the end of the month to spend on important preps. One system I found very useful to keeping our expenses in check on a monthly basis is to use a cash envelope system. What we do is create a line item for each expense each month in our budget, and then on payday, we simply go to the bank, withdraw the money we need, and then put the money in each envelope for that line item. So for example, if we have $400 in the budget for groceries, we put $400 in the envelope marked groceries. By using this approach, we're able to keep a close eye on what we're spending money on each month. Step number five, get three to six months worth of savings in place. This is one of those things that you may think is really hard to do, but you'd be surprised how much momentum you'll gain after you move through steps one through three. Having three to six months worth of income and savings allows you to handle most catastrophes that may come up. Let's say you lose your job. This is a scenario which is very possible and impacts a lot of people all the time. Again, in prepping, the goal is to not only prep for disasters like earthquakes or hurricanes, but just things that can happen in everyday life. The loss of a job can be very catastrophic and having a three to six month cushion in savings will hopefully give you time to find a new job or you may have a large expense if your car's transmission goes out. By having this savings in place, it keeps us from falling back into debt and having to rely on credit cards to get us through tough times. The feeling of security of, of having a cushion to fall on should a problem come up is also a great feeling and it really helps remove a lot of stress. Just a side note, this money is not to be used for investment purposes tied up in some kind of a, you know, an investment account that you cannot immediately access, but rather you should keep this in a well-established credit union or a small bank. Number six, diversify what you spend money on. When I first got into prepping, I found myself wanting to get all the cool gear, gadgets, 
bug out bag items, firearms, and other items I felt were so important, if I could go back and start all over again, I would have focused on more important things for survival instead of the tactical products. For example, if you have $100 in your monthly budget, I'd start by picking up a $20 mini cellular water filter, some water containers, basic flashlight, cans of food to stock in my pantry, and a simple medical kit. Does that sound really exciting? No, not really, but if there were an emergency that hit my area, having these on hand would be far more valuable than a cool EDC bag. Don't get heavy into one area when spending money on your preps, but rather spread the money out all over the basics. My budget priority is broken down in this order. First is water, and if you're new to prepping, focus on getting a two-week water supply built up. I covered this more in a video entitled, Seven Steps for Emergency Water Preparation. The next item would be food. Start by getting a two-week food supply built. You can watch my video, How to Easily Build a Two-Week uh, Emergency Food Supply to get more information. The third thing I would do is focus on medical. Get some basic medical kits or build your own. A great resource is a Doom and Bloom YouTube channel where Dr. Bones and Nurse Amy discuss medical preparation and survival. I highly recommend you check out their channel to learn more. Mobility. Being able to move on a moment's notice and survive while being mobile is important. I've done a few videos on building bug out bags, uh, both for yourself and for the family. The next item on my list is security and firearms. Now for some this is the top of their list of things to budget for, but I'll leave that up to you to decide. If you're looking for affordable options for firearms to get you started, you might want to take a look at the Maverick 88 12 gauge shotgun. Again, no need to run out and buy a tricked out battle rifle that can cost you thousands of dollars when a simple shotgun will get you started. And last on my list of priorities is precious metals. I put this last on my list as I believe this is a long game approach and in my opinion should be last on your list. Again, you might have a totally different opinion and I would love to get your feedback in the comments section. In the event of a catastrophe, people aren't going to be you know, quite as excited to get a piece of silver from you if they're trying to feed their family and need food or some other important barter item. And lastly, number seven, invest in education to gain skills and knowledge. Skills and knowledge are invaluable. Whenever you can get the opportunity to gain an education from an expert, invest in it. Whether that means picking up books on learning how to operate a ham radio, gardening, or medical skills, or taking a firearm safety course, I recommend investing in good books or classes. Now, gear is great to have, but knowledge is far more valuable. Investing in some good books serve a number of purposes in the event of a catastrophe. Having a physical book containing information when the internet is down will be so important. I'm in the process of building my own prepper library and having books on gardening and first aid are a great start in my opinion. Obviously there's tons of free information on YouTube, but again, having that physical hard copy should the grid go down will be invaluable. Learn now how to suture a laceration or how to grow a garden. I invested in learning material for gardening and while I'm having some success at the moment, there's still a lot more I need to learn and I'm glad I've invested in this knowledge and I'm taking the time to apply these skills now before a catastrophe when it will probably be too late to learn. Any opportunity you can find to educate yourself, even if it requires spending money, do it. But what about long-term financial prepping like Roth IRAs and 401ks? While I personally invest in Roth IRAs, I do realize that there are no safe investments and I'll leave it up to the viewer to decide what approach they'll want to take for long-term investments. I've watched the stock market rise and fall over the last 16 years and I'm pretty sure we're in yet another bubble. Land is taxed and you can get hit with eminent domain. I had a friend who heavily invested in precious metals for years only to have someone break into his home and steal it all. There really are no guarantees. I try to do the best with the money I have and I'm not looking for anyone to take care of my life but me. And this is the life of a prepper, moving towards self-sufficiency. Look down the road a little further than most people are comfortable doing, even if it means realizing you have to make sacrifices now financially to ensure you and your family will have a much greater chance of weathering a storm later. Thanks again for taking the time to watch this video. As always, I enjoy feedback from the YouTube community as you guys teach me so much. If you have any insight into anything I didn't cover or you have a different view on any of the items we discuss, please comment below. Also, if you enjoyed the video, please feel free to like or share on social media. As always, be safe out there.